I wouldn't be able to do stuff like this without this. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a look and doing a how-to on the Cricut. And this is the Cricut Explore Air 2. This is a vinyl cutting machine. It also cuts a bunch of other things, but I don't know why or how, because that's not what I bought it for. Not only does it cut things, you can also use it to make templates or marker things or drawings or all kinds of stuff. This really does have a lot of other uses, but most of those are for the actual intended audience, which is scrapbookers. This one thing has really changed the game for me in terms of my paint jobs on all of my trucks. And whether or not you use it as a vinyl sticker machine or a vinyl cutting machine, it really is a pretty impressive piece of machinery that I think most of us will find extremely useful in our hobby. Now, this is the Explore Air 2, which is a more budget version. They do have a bunch of other models, uh, some much better, some a little worse than this one. It's sort of right in the middle, and it worked perfectly for what I need it for, which is strictly cutting vinyl. The Cricut comes with everything you'll need to get started, including the software, the machine itself, the cutting blades, a couple of markers, which I think are for creating artwork, which is another thing the Cricut can do. I've never tried it. Uh, the cutting mat, which mine is covered in cat hair, because with cats, there is always cat hair. I don't necessarily recommend using the Cricut consumables. They are a lot more expensive than, say, the Oracal stuff that you can get online. Uh, and uh, this stuff works just as well and uh, it is, in fact, much cheaper. So uh, that's what I would recommend. I will say, yes, you should use their mat. It's designed for their machine. And this is the sort of vinyl that I'm talking about. This is from Oracal. It's an intermediate which I think means it's not as super sticky as some of them are. Uh, this is a great vinyl. I got a massive pack on eBay of sort of a sampler of all the colors that they offer in this version, and it was not very expensive, and it will last forever. It is great for making masks. You can also use it as an actual sticker on the outside, like I showed you on the Gladiator. That curry decal was cut on the Cricut and then applied onto the outside of the body as a sticker. What I'm gonna be talking about more today is the actual mask usage and how you can create masks to paint with and create some pretty awesome paint effects without having to spend a lot of time hand cutting, which I used to do a lot of, and I know people like Hemistorm still do it. It's really amazing if you have that creativity and that patience. I sometimes don't, so having something like this really does change the game. I've got an example here of a Proline cliffhanger body. I painted this uh, with on-point paints, but all the masking was done with the Cricut. Any of these tiny logos, the Motul, Method race wheels, anything along here, all of them were cut with the Cricut. And as you can see, it gives you a pretty darn good mask to work with. It's pretty amazing what's possible. And uh, there are so many great ways to layer paint uh, and create some really sophisticated looks that would not be as easy to do with masking tape or liquid masks. So this is a technique that I have found works really super well. And I'm going to share with you how I do it. In order to do that, we need to get away from the workbench and into the computer room. So let's go do that now. Okay, so here we are at the computer. And uh, this is my desktop for my computer and I'm going to show you where you can get images or references or inspiration for you to start getting things cut into uh, masks for the Cricut. So usually what I do is I start on the internet. We're going to go straight over to axialracing.com and they've actually got all of their logos in the format that we can use directly in the Cricut, which is pretty amazing. Um, they've got a couple of different options here. I'm just gonna grab one um, as a PNG logo, and PNG is a file format. They also have vectors, and vectors is something else we're gonna talk about here in a minute. Uh, instead of using ready-made graphics, you can also create your own graphics and import those into Cricut and make masks out of those. We're going to start with something simple here though. This is just a straight Axial logo in a PNG format. We're going to right click on that, save that to the desktop. Another option, of course, uh, if you aren't going to use a ready-made 
decal that a company is providing, you can always just open a Google search. So we're gonna look for Method Racing logo. We'll just hit enter and a whole bunch of images pop up right away. And most of these are probably going to be absolutely fine to work with. So let's take a look here. Uh, this one here looks like it is actually already a uh, PNG, which it is, and it's a nice big one. So we're just gonna drag that to the desktop because we'll try that one too. One thing I can say in terms of what's gonna work best for the Cricut is something like this, high contrast. Uh, black on white, white on black, those are gonna work best uh, because the Cricut software needs to be able to see basically two colors in order to create a really good smooth cut. Uh, you can try to use a very complicated logo, but chances are it's not gonna work very well. This sort of format is going to work absolutely flawlessly. So that's what we're gonna use. Okay, we can close the web. Now we've got our images. We're gonna open up the Cricut Design Space, which is the software that is included with the Cricut cutting machine. Uh, and uh, this is what it looks like when you open it up. Great to see you, Matthew. Can't wait to see what you make. <laughs> I can't wait to see what we make too. All right, so let's start a new project. And this is the canvas that it gives you here and it's showing it at 100%, but we can zoom back out and it'll be huge. Uh, and there are a bunch of pre-created templates, projects, shapes, images, text, phrases, all kinds of different things that are already built into the software. In fact, we go to images here. Uh, we'll go to sports and recreation. And there's gonna be all sorts of options here. Most of these, as you can see, have a price attached to them. There is a subscription service that Cricut offers, so you get all of these all the time for fee. Uh, but there are a ton of free ones as well. Ah, I am also a weekend hooker. That's probably a fishing joke. You can filter by free and then it shows you a bunch of free ones. And the free ones are gonna be a lot more basic. Uh, but these are all images that are ready to be cut and made into masks or, or uh, just cut images. Uh, and you can use any of these for free. And all you have to do is, uh, let's, where's that? There's that fire, I'm gonna use that one. So you can just click on it and then add to canvas and it's going to add it to our canvas. You can see it's seven-ish seven, is seven -ish centimeters across by 10 centimeters high. And that's something to always keep in mind. When you're cutting your things, you're gonna to need to scale them so they're the proper size to fit on the body that you're going to be eventually painting. They can't be larger, they can't be smaller, they have to be exactly the size that you wanna use. Uh, these can be scaled. You can make them any size you want and it maintains sharpness. That's the beauty of the Cricut software and how it works. It basically takes whatever image you feed it and creates a vector. And a vector is a resolution independent uh, file. So no matter how big or how small you make it, it maintains its sharpness. So that's just taking one of the template images and putting it into the Cricut. We're going to get rid of that because I don't want to make a fireplace right now. What we are going to do is we're going to go to upload. And this is where uh, I think the Cricut software really gets powerful. Click that and you can see all of the graphics that I've made in the past little while. Uh, but we're going to upload a new image. We're going to grab that method logo that I pulled from the desktop. There we go. And we're going to open that up. And because it was a PNG, it already had a transparent background. So that's Fantastic. You can upload JPEGs, GIFs, SVGs, DXFs, BMPs, PNGs, all kinds of different images. Uh, this one is already set and ready to go. So obviously it's going to be a very simple image because there is only one color. Just hit simple and continue. Then it says, well, okay, here's the image. Anything that's showing this checkerboard pattern, that's going to be invisible. And because it was a PNG, it already was invisible. It didn't have to do any work. For the sake of this demo, I've also gone back and found a method logo that doesn't have the background already transparent. I think it's kind of key to show you how this software is powerful and how it can work. So we're gonna upload a new version of that method logo here. You can just drag and drop it right into the scene. And as you can see, this one's got a white background and then a black outline for the, uh, the logo itself. And uh, we can still hit simple. It's still gonna find all of the colors because there's only two. And now we can go in and actually delete elements that we don't want to keep. What we're going to do for this one is after we've deleted the background there, we're going to go in and delete all the white of the lettering 
because the black's a lot more prominent and there's going to be more of it. So it's easier to, to delete the inside of the lettering. And this won't affect how the mask gets cut uh, because all it does is find edges and cut them out. And I actually like this one better because it does have the actual rounded sort of uh, rectangle around the outside too. Okay, so we've gone and we've selected anything that was a letter there and deleted it. So now you can see it's all checkerboard and black. So we can apply and continue. And now it's cut a perfect mask here. And you can see there's either the print version, which is just going to draw this image out, or the cut image. And we want to use the cut image. So we're going to click on that and upload. It's going to add it into our list of things that we've added to our, uh, our recent uploads. And we just click on that and say add to canvas. And now it adds it to the canvas. We've still got the fireplace in there. Get rid of that fireplace. So now we've got this image here. And if we click on it, it'll show the size being 30 centimeters across and seven centimeters high, which is pretty massive for any body that I would be trying to put this on. So we're gonna go in and scale that down and you can scale it either using your mouse and just scaling it manually or if you had a desired size in mind, you can go up to the size area here and actually make this the right size for your application. And I'm gonna go around 15 centimeters wide, I think. And if we hit enter and that lock has been enabled, it'll automatically size the height at the same scale. So that's great, that's perfect. Okay, now that we've got this image here in our canvas, there are a few different ways that you can apply this. If you are just making a sticker, just making a decal, and you're gonna put it on the outside of the body, you don't have to do anything from this step forward. You can go on to the next step. If you are going to be creating a mask and you wanna use this as a masked element on the inside of a Lexan body to paint it on the inside, that's how Lexan's normally painted, you're gonna to have to flip this around because if you were to apply this sticker sticky side in, it would show up backwards on the Lexan, on the outside. So you have to flip it. All you have to do, go over here, is flip it. Or uh, instead of flipping it horizontally, you're gonna to wanna to flip it vertically. I don't know why, that seems like a bug in the software, but that's what you do. So now that we've got this backwards, when you apply it to the inside of the body, it'll actually be the right side when you paint it. Only if you're doing it as a mask and only if you're doing it on Lexan. If you're using it as a mask on a uh, regular hard body, you will want to have the actual logo because you stick it on the outside. I hope that all makes sense. It's not as easy to describe here as it is practically, but we can show you a few examples once we get off the computer. Okay, so let's say we're gonna use this on a Lexan body. It's gonna be a mask, we're gonna be painting it. So uh, the black will be, say, one color and the letters will be another. All right, so now that we've got that built in, uh, we're only gonna do one. Actually, let's do two at the same time. So we can take this and you can actually just, uh, I believe you can just copy and paste and it adds another element, there we go. And we're gonna flip that back so it's the right way around. We'll use this one as a mask for an outside body. Now we can go to make it because we're gonna make these now. These are both cut images ready to go. Just hit make. And this is exactly what the mat looks like. You can see there's one normal way and one reversed just like we wanted. So the light grip mat is a light grip and you can peel this away quite easily. It's really just designed to kind of hold the vinyl in place while the machine cuts it. So now the next step is to continue and connect our machine and cut these out. And uh, it's very simple once you get to this portion of the process. Make sure that you've selected the proper material for the cutting that you're doing. Uh, and uh, it's as simple as pressing the advance button to feed the sheet into the Cricut machine and then hitting the Cricut button and off it goes. It can cut paper, vinyl, hard stock, light cardstock, fabric, all kinds of different things can be cut with it, including very thin styrene. So if you wanted to experiment and make some styrene elements, maybe this could be the machine for you too. It's almost like a very cheap CNC machine that can only do very thin layers. <laughs> and once that's finished, unload the material and we can go back into the workshop because that's all you need to do here. There are two examples here uh, that, I've, that I've got that we're going to use for two different applications. One's going to be a sticker on the outside. The other one's going to be a mask 
for the inside. So of course, if you're using a hard body uh, and you're using these as masks, you can still use them as masks on the outside. Just be careful that uh, what you're sticking them to has cured properly, otherwise they might lift off the paint. You don't want that to happen. Okay, so this top one here, this is printed the right way around, so this would be for the exterior to be used as either a mask or a decal. We're gonna treat it as a decal, I think, for the sake of this uh, demo. Because there's so much extra material, we're obviously not gonna try sticking it down with all of this material on there, so we're gonna peel off all this stuff we're not gonna use. And just peel all that away. Pretty easy going on that part there. And I think I like the exterior uh, rounded uh, rectangle there. So we're going to use that, but we're going to take out all the lettering. And the best way to do that, again, is just to uh, go in there with your blade and just be very careful about it. Lift like right on the edge. Here, I'll do it so you can see. And we're just going to peel up very carefully in the corner there. And there is a middle section here, so be careful to not pull that away and there we go good same thing on the O but you can see the the Cricut does a great job of cutting all of these quite accurately like nothing is uh, nothing sticking behind so again a good quality logo in will give you great quality results out some of these smaller letters may require a little bit more finesse as you can see the center of the A lifted as well and that's just the nature of the machine. Sometimes it just misses an edge, so you may have to reposition that ever so slightly. There we go. Let me just get the wheels part done. Okay, so that's it. Finally weeded. You can see that we've created a nice looking decal there, and you're probably wondering, how are we gonna get this onto the vehicle or onto the body without messing it all up? Because there's all these little bits like in the O and the D and the A and the R. We don't wanna lose those. Well, this is where uh, masking tape comes in really handy. And we're gonna try to line it up as closely as we can to the actual logo. And that's pretty close enough for Jazz. And a really handy tool to have is a burnishing tool. These come in handy all the time, and uh, I've used it a ton. My wife got me this uh, a long time ago, and uh, all you do is use it as sort of like a spatula to really kind of smooth that tape onto the actual vinyl. There we go. That should be good enough. Let's pretend our cricket is the actual body that we're going to be putting this logo on. Uh, just as like simple example. Now that we've got that tape applied directly to the decal, we can pull away the backing paper from the actual vinyl. And you see everything lifts off perfectly with it. Yes. Just be mindful of those little tiny bits. And I'm just going to stick it on here for the sake of putting it on something. And then just peel back your masking tape and everything stays on there. Just go slowly with your masking tape. And there you go. A nice Method Race Wheel sticker on your Cricut machine. Just where you wanted it. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you the alternative technique which is using it as a paint mask on the inside of a Lexan body. And like I showed on the computer, I've printed this one out backwards. So you're actually gonna see the whole same logo just in reverse. And we'll do the same thing, weed through all of the lettering here and uh, we'll end up with a mask here and we'll cut to that right now. So again, we've weeded another uh, version here. This one is going to be a paint mask for the inside of a Lexan body. So wherever there isn't decal, that's where the paint's gonna go. You could leave all of the extra letters inside the mask, leave them all in there, apply this to the inside of the body and then choose at a later point, once you've got your base colors on, what your letter color is gonna be. The same process applies. You have to put masking tape on the exterior of it so you have something with which you can stick this onto the body. And there we go, same thing. Same old process, burnishing tool, get all those elements, all those little tiny bits attached to the masking tape itself. This is a Proline Mustang drag car body. I'm going to be painting this up for an EVGA giveaway that's coming up, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. We've got our Lexan body ready to go, and I've already transferred my mask onto masking tape, so we've got that ready to go too. Assume that the body is cleaned on the inside, use dish soap, 
clean it really well, dry it, uh, just to prep it for paint. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up and it really is helpful when it's uh, clear. You can really see where things are gonna have to go. And we're just gonna place it somewhere here along the door line, somewhere right around there. Try to get it as straight as you can the first time around. And again, we're gonna do the same thing and just peel away our masking tape. And there we go. Now we've got a great mask ready for paint. If you are going to paint these letters, say one color and everything else is gonna be different, then you would wanna mask off this logo too. And you can just use masking tape for that. But that's basically how you would do it. And then you can end up with really nice results. Really nice, sharp, crisp graphics can be achieved with this process. You do have to be patient. You do have to use light coats. Rest assured, the results are totally worth all of the effort. And uh, the Cricut is a great machine to have in your arsenal. You want to make some custom decals? You want to make decals that nobody else offers? You want to do custom paint masks? There really are endless possibilities with a Cricut. Even though this isn't sponsored by Cricut, I would heartily recommend their machines and definitely there will be a ton of uses. And if you've already got one in your home and you haven't tried using it, now's the time. Because honestly, it will really up your paint game and up your detail and quality game. Have you used a Cricut? Have you used any sort of paint masks before or is this all new to you? Post a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video and you like how to's and you like demos, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. And there will be lots more content coming, especially how to's. So I hope you'll stick around. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.